Hi guys, today I'm going to show you this beautiful Moroccan style wedding cake. So as you can see, there's loads of things we're going to be covering today on this beautiful wedding cake. So lots of different painting techniques uh, from sort of a very sharp and box style down here with this really sort of lovely design. And up here we've got a textured cake with the paintwork on here and a bit more abstract up the top. And then we're going to make this beautiful flower, some framework, and of course creating this lovely big uh, juicy flower on top. So come on, let's get started. Okay, so let's get started on making this cake. You can see here I have um, been very naughty and I've uh, shortcutted straight to the decoration side. Uh, we've got loads of, loads of tutorials on the website on how to ice ganache uh, cake, so um, we can refer back to them. We'll put some links uh, on the, the bottom somewhere just so you can link back. Now there's a great one by Anna Maria um, from uh, Sydney, Australia, and she's got her yellow magnolia cake, uh, and it's all about box uh, boxed. Um, uh, panelling the cake. Um, so, um, <clears throat> quite quite simply, uh, you can see here I've not stuck the cakes down, these are just dummy cakes. Um, so, just to show you this one for instance, this has done, been done in four panels. Um, so, a, you, a little square disc on top, and then you do the two opposite sides first, and then the two other sides. Okay. Now, you'll notice I've got quite a cool texture on that one, so I want to I'm going to show you I've got that really cool texture uh, in a wee uh, second. Um, so the other thing is, uh, is this really big cake here. Now what I've done here, this is what I, Anna Maria does I'm sure, um, uh, she ices uh, th three sides and then she panels the back. So you've, you've only got the joints to, to hide at the back of the cake. So you can see here, um, it's a lovely nice sharp edge. Sharp edge at the front, so that's the bit everyone's going to see. Now, I, want, I don't want to show you the back because um, I've done it. I have iced this, not the best because it's just a dummy cake. Um, but as long as it looks nice for the front for the camera, that's the main thing. Um, so you can see at the back here, you can still see my little joints. I've not quite blended them away uh, that well. But the idea is that's the only bit you, sh you have to blend is the back here, like that. Again, it's a panel on top of the cake. <coughs> so I've just got that on. Uh, um, 12 inch cake drum that we're going to ice in a wee second. So as I say this one is just um, four panels and then the top bit uh, and then the top one same thing here. So now the top one is quite a big cake. Now I didn't have a dummy that size so I had to stick two dummies together so you can slightly just see uh, the, the mark there. So obviously if you can ash it all it'll be nice and smooth. And I've done the exact same with this one. Uh, so th there's the, the joins there. Uh, and now, for, because it's a, a, a dummy cake, oops, didn't mean to move that, um, I've just iced it flat. So I put the square disc on top first, and then I put the, the, back, the back piece on, put lots of ice and sugar, turned it around, rolled the sugar paste out and just wrapped it over the top, cut it off, and then sharpened it all up, and then I just lifted it up, ready, ready to go. If that's a real cake, you can do the exact same thing. Once it's ganached, pop it in the fridge so it goes really hard, um, and then pop your panel on top, and then do exactly what I've just said there, and you would think it's quite a small cake, so it's not too heavy, even when it's, even when it's got actually got cake um, in it. Now just remember if, you, if it's got cake going through the cake, so like this one here, um, we'll have like three tiers, so one, two, three. So you have one card cake drum there, or a card there, and a card there, so that you're, you're separating tiers, and inside should be doubled. Okay, so you wouldn't just have three, three cakes stacked on top of each other. Okay, so you have your... Um, your cake card and then your dowels underneath, cake card and your dowels underneath all the way through just to keep that structure from it. Um, okay, but as I said, there is tutorials on the website for that. Um, and then when you come to stack the cakes, you know the same thing again. So once you've decided, so we're putting a slightly offset, so that'll go to the side. So the, the dowels underneath it and then a bit royal icing, and then likewise, this goes on top, and again, dowels and stick down, and there you're good to go. Okay, so that's how we get to that stage. Now, just to get the nice texture that we've used, I always like to use textures that aren't designed for how they're supposed to be. And I just really like the, the, the feel of that one. Um, so. Uh, so I've got my drawing here, actually. So, uh, so just, uh, just to, to, to explain uh, what we're doing here. So um, there's a picture in the templates. Um, I've, got, I've got it here as well uh, on my phone. 
um, which will just sit there. I don't know if Daryl will be able to see that or not. It's a bit dark, so it's probably better to look at the templates, the picture there of it. Um, so what I want to do, I love that terracotta colour. So my idea was to bring the terracotta colour uh, into the bottom of the cake. Then I really liked um, that picture. So I thought we could just run through the whole thing, we could just do like a, a quarter of it. So the idea is, is to bring a bit of gold and then a little bit of black, black lines, and then doing this sort of medallion uh, here, which I thought was quite nice. And then what I liked was um, the, the textures uh, from the, the, the sort of little cushion things here, the little stools. Um, so that's where this tier came in from. So I thought let's try and do some bringing the black and the gold and coppery colours into there. And then the picture on top, the very contemporary picture, I thought we could do some sort of paintwork on the, the top tier. So that's where the, the design has come from. Okay. So to get the colour, I used 250 grams of red, uh, 250 grams of yellow, and 62 and a half, 62 and a half grams of um, brown, or a quarter of a pack. The wee packs come in 250 grams, so a quarter of a pack um, for that. Now to ice the cake, this, this size of cake, um, I times that by four um, to get to make sure I had enough sugar paste. Oh no, I times it by three. Sorry, so that'd be seven hundred and fifty. Yeah, seven hundred and fifty, seven hundred and fifty, and three quarters of a pack of um, the the brown. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, that's it. Good. Okay, so uh, that's fine. So, so what I want to do now is just show you how to get the texture. And so I'm just going to roll this down. My little um, green pads haven't worked today. The I actually need to stop there because actually we don't want, I'm not making anything just now, I'm just showing you. So this is what I used, I bought this ages ago and I never actually used it. It's a textured mat from Marvelous Moulds and it's the long fur impression mat uh, and I never, I never actually used it. So um, I decided to use it for the wedding cake. I just love the texture it's given. So, um, so all I had to do was cut out the panel and made the panels the panel was one inch bigger all the way around. I got the texture mat. Now, what you want to do is you want to press down. So roll the sugar paste out thinner than this. This is just because I'm just showing you an example. So um, about three or four mils. Lift it up. Look at that cool texture. Now the problem I've got is it's not long enough. So when you're putting the second one on, don't butt it right next to where the, the join is because you, you've got a line going across. So what you want to do is actually lift it over about an inch, a couple of centimetres, and don't press on that a line at all. Only press underneath where you can see the join. Okay, so then we go back. You'll, see, you'll be able to see a wee bit of a, because the patterns won't match, but it, it just it, it doesn't. you don't have that line to deal with. There you go, and you can see there we've got a really nice uh, textured panel there, and that's how we got that, okay? So ice the top, side, 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 okay, to opposites and opposites, and that's how we do that. So what I thought we could do now is we could ice the board and then transfer the cake over to the, the board. Now, you've got two ways, you could actually stick this down, um, and then you could just ice uh, in panels around, would be fine, but again, I just wanted to add a little bit of texture to the, the, the board. So what I thought we could do today is use another textured mat. Okay, just roll this down. So we, oh, that's annoying. That's, I put sugar paste underneath to stop them, the board from sliding because I've not got a non-slide mat. Do you know, I've been into the shop a hundred times and I pass them, they're at the door, and I have to keep forgetting to pick up the little mats when I'm in. Oh, got a little bit of that green, must have came off that, that bit there. Okay, so just powder that. Be pressed down as much as I can just to save the rolling time. And uh, what I want to do is let's just get a quick roll down to about three or four mils, and then ice the, the board, and then add the texture. Once it's once it's actually iced. Oh, this is um, Master Chino Tropic, and it is very stiff today. So 
if you get a 12 inch cake drum and just give it a little wet Okay, and I just want to, oops, put the sugar paste on it. Okay, just to make sure it's stuck down. It doesn't really matter how it looks because we're going to put texture on it. Okay. Just, it just feels like it should be a, a, rather than a plain, you could just go for a plain whiteboard if you wanted. Um, but I think it'd be really nice having the, the texture. So, um, there we go. Okay, once you've iced that, just make sure you... It's, sometimes with the massa, because it kind of pulls itself back. Yeah, we're going to trim it again anyway. So, just scrunch up your scraps. There we go. And uh, what I thought we could use is the Wild Meadow Mold from Karen Davies. This one here. Okay, so just want to press on and it just giving us those lines, almost like straw. And then just going around the sides. Okay, and then just try, there we go, like that. And then round here, I'm keeping it the same direction. Okay, and then the back. Or doesn't matter about it, just so just keeping it all in the same. It just gives a nice different feel. There we go. That's fine. Make sure you've definitely got it that it's covering all the. Yep. Could put a bit more down here. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, now if I just lift the knife, uh, the board up, and uh, I'm just going to cut it this way like a pie. That brings back memories of working in the bakery, especially as it's, it's uh, just before Christmas here just now we're filming this and um, steak pies, Christmas and New Year were always a, a biggie, especially New Year in Scotland. Right, okay, so that looks rather nice, like that. So just, just, it's just look around the house uh, in your toolbox, is there anything you can use that just gives a little bit different texture uh, and it just, just gives it something a little bit different to, it was a, a, almost like a rug effect that it's got, so it's like the cake sat in a rug. Okay, and then to stick the cake uh, down, oh no, no we're not going to stick the cake down, what was I saying? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do it all in separate uh, decorations, make it easy and then stack. So what I'm going to have a quick tidy up, I'm going to try and stick this board down again and then we come back we're just going to move on to working on the bottom tier first and that's uh, marking out and painting the gold and working on the, the flower. Okay so back in a wee bit. Okay so uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the bottom tier first. Um, so I've got the, the Karen Davies uh, Buttercream Flowers mould uh, and I thought this kind of big Dahlia Jebra type flower would be great to get that gold design that we want on the bottom tier. So, uh, so I've measured this, the size of it and it's about 8, it's actually 9 centimetres. So what I was thinking is if we go up to 10 and the 10 is going to be the inside of the box, okay? So if we get the, the ruler uh, on the bottom and measure from the outside and I just want to mark a little line where the 10 is. Now then we're going to, so that 10 is going to go up there across there, we're going to have the flower in here. Do you know what I'm thinking actually, should we go, yeah, no, so 10, so 10, if we put the black line, so it'll be 10, will be, the black line will be on the inside and then say it's like half a, half a centimetre to the side, like that. Uh, and then we're going to have a four centimetre gold frame. So from that little mark there, I'm going to go across here. So that's the, so when I say that little mark, so that's uh, 10 and a half centimetres. And from 10 and a half centimetres, we're doing another four centimetres. 
Okay. Like that. So altogether for this size here, it is uh, 15, 15 centimeters uh, long. Okay. Now what we want to do now, or we can actually measure from the other side, I suppose, uh, which is not perfect. So it's five, roughly five and a half uh, centimeters. So what I want to do now is we want to get the smoother, this smoother here, and you can see here. Uh, by using that, we're getting that straight, straight angle, okay? Uh, and what we want to do is we've got our, um, our flower design, which is going to sit roughly in the, the, the middle, so about here. So what we've got to do is work out how tall we want the box to be. Now, looking at that, I quite like that angle, that height. So it's four centimetres there. So if we go another four centimetres up the way, so let's just see, one, two, three, four, eighteen. Actually, do you know what? I'm pretty much bang on the height of that uh, that smoother, which is perfect. So it was eighteen was perfect, but it's actually eighteen and a half. So we're going to just go for the eighteen and a half uh, centimeters up. Um, so we just want to put your smoother on there, and then just get your pin tool. I mean, remember, my cake's not stuck down. Okay, there we go. And you can see we've got this lovely uh, little mark on there. Uh, and then to go across there, that's not going to be too high for me. So what I need to do is I need to measure it. Okay, so 18 there. <coughs> okay, just hold that against there. It's not good when the cake's so light. There we are. So there we go. So we've got a really nice etched uh, line there. And then we just want to then go out. So we've got the, um, it was the, the next one. So it was the four one, it was four centimetres further out. So again, we want to measure that all the way up. Now, I was getting a better measurement from, uh, actually, we could use the line. No, we can't. It's better to use the cake. So pop that on there. So it's 15 uh, centimetres. So I just place that on there. Now, the size of that was uh, four and a half centimetres, so it needs to be four and a half centimetres here. Okay. There we go. And this was, sorry, what was this, uh, 15? Just making sure it's, there. yep. There we go, so I've got my, my point there and then down there. Okay, so that's good. So if I just lay the ruler here. Good. Okay, let me just hold that. And then across the way. There we go. Nice. Good. Okay, so that looks nice. So I'm liking that really contemporary feel uh, from the lines. Uh, so don't worry about the the paint, the flower just now. We'll make that later on. So what I've got here is my 96% uh, um, alcohol. Um, this stuff is from uh, Barco Quick Paint. Um, so it's a food uh, assured uh, paint uh, for drying, okay? And it's just, it's, it's an ethanol um, alcohol. So what we want to do is get pick what gold you want to go for. So I've got antique gold and I have some radiant gold. Um, so we might do a little mixture of the two. So I'm going to pop some in there. And we really want brush strokes and we really want to see like sort of texture uh, when we're doing this. I might even pop 
a little bit of um, bronze uh, on there as well. Just I don't want it to be a flat colour, I want to see brush strokes and different things. So, so getting the paint brushes. Uh, now remember the good thing about what we're doing here is we're going to do a frame, a black frame, so you can come over the edge a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. Okay, so a little bit of the magic stuff on each one. Okay. Okay, and uh, I've got the, th the turntable has been uh, firmed up so it's not moving and uh, we just really want to just get in there and just start to paint brush strokes up and down. Obviously trying to c keep your um, self inside the, the box. Here, I'm just going to go something like that, okay, and then just change your brush. and I just want to add a different tone of gold. Okay, and then change over to uh, the, which one was that? Here's the bronze. Quite earthy, it's got an earthy tone, isn't it? Yeah, that's nice. Now what I'm thinking of doing is just trying to break up the straight lines and just to incite strokes as well. As it starts to dry, you actually mark the the surface, which gives it gives a nicer effect. Yep, not happy with that. I'm just going to leave it leave it like that. That looks good. So then, what I want to do is move on to the dark side, and we need a bit of black, a little bit gold. Um, so I've got um, powder color. This is Black Magic from uh, Rainbow Dusts. Okay, so I'm going to pop some in the middle. Okay, I'm going to use this. Um, as well. Let's just pop. There you go, it's very, very dark. And I'm going to use this, this one, it's a slightly more rounded type brush. Okay, and I just want to go on and really just. What we want to do is get that black on. You see the nice pattern that's happening. And what we're going to do is go around in the, the pattern, in the, the, the blank, so to speak. Uh, we will go around with a gold 
and just fill the fill it in. So there's no terracotta showing at all. Okay, so just I'll just quickly do this. We'll just maybe fade this on and out because that's going to be quite a thing. So we can do some bigger blotches and smaller ones, so it's not too um, sort of uh, neat looking. Okay, it's actually got an animal print feel about it. It hasn't really. Okay, so that's good. Um, now that's drying nice and fast, fast, which is good. Um, so what we want to know is decide what colour we think. Uh, I actually think maybe the lighter gold might look quite nice. Um, so I think the radiant, or maybe a mixture of the radiant and the, the antique. Is it antique gold we used? Was it? Yeah. I might do a mixture of the two, so I'm going to put some radiant gold in there. And then a little more antique gold. Okay, and put more of this in. Okay. Okay, and we really just want to go around and just dab that gold. Okay, so I'm just going to do the first sort of quarter there. See how this looks. Okay, so yep, that looks good. It's going on nice. I'm actually putting some over the black as well just to to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, so that's giving it a really nice effect. So uh, so I, I'll just go around and finish it all off, fill, on, fill it in, trying to get rid of as much of that uh, terracotta colour as possible. Uh, and then when we come back, I'll have it rolled out to the black uh, sugar paste, which we're going to use just to sort of stripe off the, the boxes. All right, so back in a wee bit. Okay, so welcome back. So you can see here, I've got all the, the painting done. It looks quite nice. It's kind of got an animal print feel about it, um, but it looks, uh, looks nice. So what we want to do now, as you can see, I've cut out my, my black strips that I said I was going to do. So I've got a 7mm, um, the, the, the ribbon cutter, and I've rolled it a bit of black, as thin as I can get it, and you just go, oops, that's because it's been sat for a while, and you just want to roll out your strips. That didn't go very well, but you, you know what I'm doing. So once you've got your strips rolled out, turn it upside down, because you get the rough edge. And just get your smoothers, and just get rid of those little rough edges. Once you've, you've done that, turn it back over and just let it air dry to firm up a little bit. Okay, so you can see here I've got uh, four bits ready to go. Let's pop that over there just now. Okay, so what I want to do now, looking at it, this has got a 2mm slant, just my, my line's been a little bit, so we can fix this when we put our uh, black on. It's uh, just slightly run slope down at the, at the top there. Um, so if we get the ruler, and we just measure that, oh, we know it should be 15, so if we sort of cut 16. Okay, so there's 16 there. Even 16 a wee bit, a wee bit, a wee bit more. Okay, uh, now the easiest way to put this on actually, sorry, um, is to place it on the, the smoother right at the edge and then when we come up to the cake, we can just uh, use that to place it onto the, the cake. Okay, so just lay it on the, on the smoother, and I just want to pop a little bit of glue. Actually, I'm just using water. Oops. All right, okay, so if we go across the cake, and just lay it down. Okay, and then just up on there, like so. Okay, and then at this stage, it still looks it's slightly running at a slight slope, 
we can just fix it. That looks better, doesn't it? Yep. Just maybe just give it a wee tap, just a slight tap up there. Yeah, that looks fine. Okay, that's good. Now, if we just get the little knife, or uh, this one, and we, we just want to cut our angle, okay, for it to butt together. There we go. So I just keep that little bit there. And, okay, so 23. We're going to get that from there. It's exactly 23, but I think we'll just take a new one. We've got plenty there. Okay, so for this one, if we get this little bit of... Um, now I'm trying to think which way I cut this off. So I cut that off that way. Uh, I'm having a brain freeze. Okay, no, so it's a little triangle. If you flip it upside down, and if I get that and place it on here, that's the, oops, the angle that was cut there. Now, if I just pop it on like that, there we go. Good, so that should button there quite nicely. Now, for this one, it's a little bit more tricky. So what we're going to do is just wet it and let it drop down. Again, just put water on and we can kind of shimmy it around once it's on. Okay. There we go. Okay, so just lift that up. On. Okay, and then just let it fall down. Okay, and then you can see here it's definitely squint. There we go. There we go. Right, so we'll just get the the ruler. And just measure that. So it's well, that's exactly two. Inches, so I'm just going to take that two inch as my guide to inch. There we go. Good. Okay, and then just bring that down, cut away the excess. Nice. Okay, and I'm just going to cut this little bit here a bit. There we are, so that looks good. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat the exact same process again uh, and just do the same for the inside part. All right, okay, so once, once we've got that done, that's the bottom tier uh, complete. Um, and then we'll be moving on to the second tier, which is fun, which is lots of painting. Okay, so back in a jiffy. Okay, so that's the framework all done. Uh, so what we want to do now is move on to making the flower, because I forgot about that before we move up top to, to do the painting. Um, so I've got the Karen Davies uh, buttercream mould. Uh, we're gonna use the big flower there. I've got a bit of kind of goldy, pale creamy color, uh, or dark cream um, sugar paste. And uh, all we want to do is pop it in there. Let's see how much we need. There we go. And uh, I've just put a little bit of corn flour in there, just to um, stop it from sticking. And we're just going to go in there and just press. Now the key thing is here, we really want to see the, the spikes at the side. Don't let the sugar paste come over the edge. And if we've got too much, we can just cut a wee bit away. I might have just a wee bit too much. Because I don't want it to be a fat bodied flower. We want it to be quite thin in the middle so it doesn't stick out too much. So if you're not sure, just push back. So you know, like you see, I'm spreading it over and then pushing back. Just make sure we definitely just keep the the sugar paste inside the design. Okay. And by doing this, I can see I'm starting to build up uh, a mound of excess uh, sucra. Okay. 
see and there good okay right okay and then too much in the middle there so I'm just going to use a sharp knife and just cut some of that excess away There we go. Okay, so just that's very flat now, so that's great. I'm just going back, just double checking. Just when I was taking the knife off that I've not. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, it's not too much, but it's enough to make a difference. Okay, and then it should just come out on its own accord. There we go, look at that. Very nice. Okay, so what we want to do is just give it a little paint. So I'm going to just grab my seat, bring my brushes back over, I've given a wee wash actually, oh, no, no, no. and there it is, okay so we're going to go for the gold on the outside, now I actually think we should go for the brighter gold, I think it just sort of stands out a little bit more, so a bit more of the, oops, too much, radiant gold. Now, I should maybe put this on a wee bit of paper, just so I can move it around. There we go. Okay, and... Okay, just a uh, little mix. Now, that bit's getting painted black in the middle, but don't worry, that's just because you don't worry if the gold goes on it, um, because it's just going to get painted black anyway. And um, we just want to go round and paint it gold and just get all the all the bits painted out and make sure you've not got any excess paints. Just just go back and brush. Because this stuff dries so quickly, um, you can go back quite fast and uh, and just buff it up almost. Make sure you get the sides so we're not seeing any of the cream. And it always just go back and brush and just brushing it out the way, so we're keeping the the shape, the sort of length of the brush strokes. Okay, so that looks nice. So again, I'll just do a wee quick fast forward, and then we'll we'll do the the, the middle bit. Right. Okay. So you can see here we've got that beautiful gold, bright gold, radiant gold, as it's called, uh, there. And uh, now we want to do is get the black and we just want to paint that middle bit there. Okay. So I'm just brushing, going down to the edge. And brushing up the way, so we're trying to keep the black off the petals and just in the middle of the, in the stamens. All right, so there we go. That's that's it. So we're going to leave that, that to dry for um, well until we come back to it. We can do the top tier uh, after that. Okay, so I'm going to quick tidy up and now we can move on to the middle tier. Okay, so this tier is going to be a bit of fun and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the, the shapes of the fur uh, to, to, to paint so, so we end up with lots of twists and turns uh, with the different uh, colours. So the base colour is going to be the sort of terracotta colour tones uh, and then we'll go a little bit, bit of browns and um, uh, gold uh, etc just to finish it off. So, um, so I've, got, I've got this colour, rust from uh, Rainbow Dust and you can see it's almost got, it's, it's actually a very rich terracotta colour there anyway. So put some in there 
a little drop in there, and a little drop in there. And what I'm going to do is, that's the, the bigger one, so this one I'm going to add yellow into there, and then this one also yellow, and then this last one I'm also going to add a little bit of white, just to make it lighter. Okay, and then if we just get our alcohol, okay, and I'm just going to start over that one first. Okay, so it's quite a dark colour. Okay. That's fine. Okay, let's put the cake a little bit closer. Yep. Okay, so if you look for the um let's take more here. the the shapes of the, the fur too much taken off. Okay, so we don't want to lose, so it's just a little bit too, too heavy, so more like that, that's better, that one's a little bit on the heavy side. Okay, and then you're just following some of those patterns that the fur's made. And just really just add that was actually quite a big one. Like that. Okay, and then round there. Try not to go on the top, just on the sides. So something like that. So of course I'll do that on all the tiers. So just trying to bring that pattern that I could maybe just add on a little bit more there. All the sides? Yes, on the side, all the sides. So I'll repeat the same process on here. So I'll do that first. So a quick fast forward and then we'll move on to the next colour. Fast forward, fast forward. Okay. Okay, so you can see there I've went round and I've painted the sort of darker uh, tone, the earthy tone. Um, so we'll move on to the next one. So it's a mixture of the, the, the rust and the, the yellow. So add the alcohol. Now that still look, it looks a little bit lighter, but it's still not quite where I want it to be. So I'm going to add quite a lot of white in there. quite an intense colour because it's, it's, it's lighter but I'm not um, no no it is let's just have a wee shot it won't do any harm oh yeah you can definitely see a different tone it's going to make it wetter yeah it's got more of a Orangey tone. So, yeah, it's more like a light terracotta. Okay, so all I want to do is the same thing again, is I'm just going round uh, and I'm just highlighting these brush strokes, the, uh, the, the, the fur. <laughs> it just seems wrong saying that for a cake. Okay. Isn't it interesting? It really didn't look like it was changing colour. But now that you see it on there, you can definitely see the colour difference. Okay, so the same thing again, I'm just going to whiz around. Uh, and I think what I'll do is I'll just mix this one up a lighter one, and I'll put that third one on as well, just to to save, because I'm just repeating the same process again. Okay, so so once I've been round and added the, th the, the third colour, uh, we'll be back um, 
to add someone with luster metallic colours and maybe some brown. Okay, so see me a bit. So we've got the three colours on, and that's this one here. Uh, off camera, I have added the gold and the, the brown and the black. Um, so that's this one here. So we're going to do this here. Okay, so I've got the gold sparkle, luster dust, mixed in with some, it's called pure gold, both from Sugar Flare. And uh, just pop a little bit in the a little bit of the the magic stuff that the alcohol mix it together. I'm using quite a dumpy paintbrush actually, quite an old one. And all I'm doing is I'm going round the edges and it's flaking off. <laughs> That's how old it is. Uh, I'm going round the edges of the some of the, the sort of brighter colours and just adding a little bit of a highlight on the edges of them. N there's no rhyme or rhythm. Just whatever side I feel like should have a bit of gold on it. And it's really nice just adding that gold. Now you could actually stop at this stage. Um, this was a very old paintbrush I'm using. Uh, and you could just finish there. But I, I quite like adding slightly darker colours just to, just to add a bit more mood um, to, to the design. So then there. And then I, just around, if I feel like I just need a little bit more gold, I'm just going round and just adding wee splashes uh, now and then, just to finish it up. All right, so I think that looks like it's got enough gold in there. Yep. Okay, and then so what I got a bit of the it's um, brown dust with some white mixed into it, and it's kind of give me like a brownie grey color. It's a little bit of an odd color, but when I mean, it's actually on the cake, it looks quite nice. So again, so what I did there was again just highlighting, you can do it in between the gold, you could do different areas. And again, you're hardly seeing this colour, but when you've got it on all together, uh, you can definitely just get the hint, the little tones. Again, I'm just doing little brush strokes. I'm using quite a big brush just to get it on there. You can see there, just doing little swivers of the bear and it just looks quite nice again just like that okay and uh, finishing off with the black so uh, we've already got that out already I'm using a much thinner brush a zero brush for this one and it, all I'm doing is going round and just adding the odd like that okay Just a little so there's a black, just sort of brings it all together, I think. Okay, so that looks good. Okay, now if we just go round, I've done the black on there, so there's no black on this one. So again, just few bits. It's really just, it really is the like abstract painting, isn't it? It's the kind of thing you'd see in a, an art gallery for sale. It's with the textures. Okay, and I've got the black on there. Yay, there we go. So, done. So that's that tier finished. All done, and of course you can go to town and add as many as many different colours on if you want, as long as you can get that kind of more earthy uh, colour to it. Okay, so I love the fact that the top's completely clean uh, for the next tier to go on. So I'll have a quick tidy, and then we come back. We're going to finish painting the top tier, which is going to be good fun, uh, and then we'll stack the cake, and then the last bit is just popping the little flower on. Okay, so last year, um, painting wise, um, so I found this brown, because that one's a bit grey, and it's a chocolate brown from Sugar Flare, um, and it's got a bit more of an earthy tone, kind of reds in it, so uh, it's quite nice. So I'm going to use that on the, on the top here, um, and uh, we're going to use that little mixture of the three, the, the sort of golds and the, the bronze uh, that we used from earlier up there as well. I'm going to pop a bit more in there. Right, um, so we want to go on with the sort of metallics first and then we shall finish off with the, um, the brown. 
Oops, don't drop. Ah, it's gone. <laughs> I'll get it later. Okay, actually, no, I want to use a, a fan. Uh, so I'm using a flat head brush, okay? So this is a 716, um, whatever that means. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the reason I want to use, I want to sort of paint the gold <clears throat> on here. Let it come to a point like that. Put a little bit more here. And then maybe a streak just coming down here. And again, coming to a point. Like something like that. Uh, and I'm just going to give it a little clean. And then just adding a slightly darker, oops, too much. Come down there. Nice. Yep. That's good. And then we're going to leave the bronze until we get the, after we put the brown on. Because uh, the brown's going to take over quite a lot of that. We're going to lose quite a lot of that gold. So let's just see. Yep, okay. So. I just want that sort of, yeah, coming down like that, a point, and um, probably not going down as far on this side. Yeah. Maybe just have a few more spikes, just slightly more feathered. Yeah, like that. That looks good. Now you can see these bits here don't look, look brilliant, so I'm just going to smooth them off. Just trying to, yeah, there we go. Good. That's fine. That's good. Okay, and then I want to move over to the um, bronze. Oops, that's not drying, it's still quite wet. Okay, so I'm going to go back with the brown. Okay. Okay, and it's just a wee bit at the top there, just get taken out. Okay, so I'll just leave that for a wee second, I think. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just change brush, that one was too severe. Got these really long ones that I never use. Um, let's just see. Give a little mix up. <clears throat> I just want a little bit of metallic coming down, just to add on. So I use a real, really gentle brush just to see how that feels. Not even sure if you've seen that or not. Oh yeah, you can see that, that's nice. Just very faint, just add an extra, a little bit extra of a layer. It's giving you that, um, just a little bit more metallic coming down. Now of course I'm just doing this one side, um, but of course you can have it going all the way around, that's, that's, that's your choice. And I'm just going to have the cam at like one canvas. I'm going to just pop a little bit, yeah. Just slightly feathering it over onto the it's still gold on its own there. Yeah, that's quite nice. Oops. 
Yep. Actually, I think that's it. I don't want to go too too crazy. Yeah, and that's fine. So, time we get the the flower on there, um, we just want that just to be like a it's a bit more plain because this is very very colourful. Yeah. So I'm going to walk away. All right. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of all this, uh, and we come back. We move on to making the the flower, and then it's just put it all together. Okay, so now we're going to move on to making the flower. So uh, it's nice and easy, so you'll be glad to know. Um, so just get some waiver paper, and I've got 22 gauge wires. I was trying to get a, a, th a slightly thinner one, but I didn't want to use a 20, uh, 22, so I'd probably 24, 26 would be fine actually. And just uh, grab a few of the wires, and just get your wire cutters, and probably just cut into a third, would be fine. There you go. Right. Okay, so what I want to do, I've got a wee candle because we're going to use that in a wee second. Um, <clears throat> so I've got a round cutter here, uh, just to give you an idea, it is two and a half inches uh, long. And just place it on, I've got two sheets of paper, <coughs> excuse me. And then the idea is that we're going to cut one two, three, four, five. So five uh, that size, and then we want to go up bigger. Now I've not got a bigger, a bigger cutter, um, so I'm not just going to freehand the, the next size. So for the first one, then we use it as a template. So uh, you can see this at the size there. So I'm just going to go round, up, and then down, something. Something like that, okay? And we want five, between five and seven of them, but probably five uh, will be uh, enough. And then all we do is just cut them out and just keep them in the wee pair. So cutting them out, it's usually better to, to do that. And then you can then just cut, make sure you cut out in the inside of the pencil so you've got no pencil marks uh, with your flower. Okay. Like that, okay? And then just pair them all up, okay? So five uh, small ones and five large ones. Or you can do between five and seven for the large ones, okay? So I'll quickly get these cut out, back in a bit. Okay, so I've got all the petals uh, cut out, so now it's a case of wiring them up. Um, so if we just grab your first set, okay? And all we want to do is get the, the water, to spray away obviously from the rest of the, the, the paper, and make sure you've got a wire ready. And give it a wee spray, pop the wire inside, doesn't have to be too far up, and then over the top, and then just press down, oops, making sure that it's sealed closed. Now, don't worry if it, it doesn't completely seal the way around. That's actually part of the charm, okay? Because we're going for a very, very contemporary sort of just. There, it's not. It's not any type of flower. It is just a big thing, okay? That's all we're looking for. Uh, and if it curls up in different directions, uh, all the better, okay? So that's like the the little one made, and then same. Just do the exact same for the big one. Now don't, just be careful because it's obviously wet there, so it's maybe good just to have a wee t tea towel every time just to sort of dry it. Or even have a wee plate, just so you're not laying it on the wet. Okay, so, there we go. Place that down. The top. Okay, and then just pressing that down. And that's it. Okay, so all I want to do is quickly do the rest, uh, do the rest of them. Okay, so we we back in the Jeff. Okay, so that's me got all the petals made. You can see they're all sat here and uh, they're they're drying quite nice. They'll be a bit soft, um, but that that's part of the charm. So um, just make sure they don't touch each other. You see how, how sticky that was. But having it a little bit soft is good because of course we can start to manipulate the, the shape uh, into a slightly more of a cup. Uh, feel, but they'll still leave it on the soft side, so don't worry about that um, just now. So what we'll do is we want to concentrate on making our centre. Um, so just get your black flower paste, and uh, let's just see, is that going to be, 
Maybe a wee bit bigger than that actually. Size of a, it's a nice size grape. A small strawberry. Yep, so about that size, which is three quarters of an inch. Okay, uh, and then just roll it into a sausage. I think so. And then get your wire. And it's a 20 gauge wire cut in half and an open hook on the end. And then we're, you know what I'm going to do next, we're just going to warm the wire up and pop it into the, the cone. Okay, this is a Christmas candle, so it smells of cinnamon, which is nice. Now it smells of burnt wire. <laughs> so you need to watch it until it goes red hot. You generally go into a bit of a daydream when that happens. Okay, it looks red hot. Now you go and push it in and just give it a wee twist as it starts to set. And that is it caramelises the sugar and the sugar goes hard and it keeps the, the wire in place. Okay, and all I want to do now is just get your scissors and we're just going to make a, like a Christmas, upside down Christmas tree. So it's kind of got a magnolia type feel to it, hasn't it really? A black, black magnolia. Okay, try, keep the scissors close to the, the row that you've just trimmed and it gives a much nicer, even feel. Okay. I was scared to touch that, completely hold the wire in case it's still scalding hot. Okay, now I'm getting to the top and there's no wire in there, so I've just got to be a bit more careful. There you go. Right. There. Yeah, I like that. That looks good. Alright, so it's definitely uh, firming up quite fast, so that's good. So what I want to do, I'm just going to place that down there just now. Uh, what we want to do is just get these petals. Um, we just want to start to, just start to manipulate them. Okay, and just start to get a little more, that kind of shape, like a sort of squished, kind of cupped feel to them. So all we're looking to do, okay. If you feel like it's not, mo it's just not flexy enough, just one little spray of water. Maybe want to be one on the, on the back. Okay, and it should, yep, so you can see there, that's enough just to help me just get that movement there. Now what you can do is you can, you can dry that over something just to sort of, uh, if, like for instance this little petal cutter. I could just lay it on the petal cutter just to get a little bit of, uh, so it cups. Okay, there we go. And then likewise again, just try and manipulate the, the petal just to get, because I've got the two layers um, of paper, uh, it gives us a bit more, we can be a bit more pliable with them, a bit more rough with them, I suppose. Okay, and then just again, two scooshes may be too much actually, maybe just one, one scoosh. So I like, I just like the, the feel of that. So I'm just going to try one scoosh, one spray. So tempted to do another one. <laughs> okay, and just, let's just see. Yeah, so the moisture doesn't really get to the back. So it really does need the two. Yeah, straight away I can feel the difference. Okay, and just manipulate the petal. All right, so I'll do that with the other ones. And then we'll plug it about five, 10 minutes to let them firm up. Uh, before we come back and um, we actually wire it up together, okay? Okay, so you can see that's the, the pedals made. They're still a little bit soft, but we're going to just get away with it. Now, while I was off camera out there just waiting to, for them to dry, I've actually stacked the cake behind me. I don't know if you can see it or not. There we go. Um, it's just royal icing, obviously, stacked, put the, popped it on the board and put the ribbon around it. So uh, you've not really missed out anything. But there is a link on, um, from Lesson 1 that I mentioned the link in the notes. Yep, and on lesson one, and it's a link to how to stack, etc. cake like that. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to uh, bring it to the flower, bring it to life, I suppose. Um, so if we bring the small petals forward first. Okay, that's fine. And if you just get your tweezers and just bend the, the petal. Just like that. Still feels a lot, there's still a little bit on the wet side. So I may just do this upside down. 
um, while it's drying. Okay. Okay, and we just want to pop a little bit of uh, florist tape on. There we go. And then likewise again, just give it a little bend. And we're just popping it on next to it. Again, just a little bit of florist tape. Let's get it upside down just to see if I haven't to keep turning it. Okay, just try and keep them next to each other. There we go. Oops. Okay, and just keep adding these petals. Now you can see there, I'm going to have a bit of a... I'm not going to get the five on, so I'm just bringing them further round. If you can, if you can manage to put on more than one at a time, then by all means do that. Okay, that one's just twisted right around. Okay, and then I'm just going to get these last two on. Put that one just underneath there. That's good, so it's leaving us one gap there, that's good. So I'll just keep, I kept on pulling them back until there was a, a, a nice gap, which you can see there. Okay, I'm just going to slot that in there. Oh, made to measure. Give it a squeeze and then just again. Now ideally just leave them to completely dry. I'm just being a bit impatient um, with this. Okay, just bring that around. There we go. Okay, that's, that's good. So you can see there, it looks nice. Okay, so that's good. So now it's time to get the, the big chaps uh, on. Now ideally, it'd be good if this was hanging. So I'm just going to hang this over the handle of the oven, oven door. There we go. Right, I'm just going to feel these. So that one feels good. That one feels good. That's good. 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 I think this one's a bit, yes, it's got the floppy. Yeah, so I'm just going to leave that one just now. Now I can just use my hands for these ones because they're quite giant. May not get all these on, but it's always good to make them. Okay, so, uh, and then get some florist tape. They're ready, so it's a really nice big modern style flower. It's like the one you see at like, um, uh, sort of shopping and um, garden centers and things for sale. They're the fake plant section. Putting vases. <laughs> okay, so same thing again. In there. And it's just a case of just does it feel good underneath? That one felt better underneath. And just keep on adding and adding until it feels like a nice flower. You can bring this tape further down this time just to keep them nice and tight. And then this one here, is this one going to go? This is, yeah, so they all, they all feel good underneath for some reason, so I'm not going to change it. Okay, and just twist it around. There we go. Good. Um, oh yeah, it looks good. Right, keep on adding. They're obviously just going at a strange angle that's just making them all want to be underneath, so I'm not going to complain at that. Okay. Now, while that we've been filming, we've had a bit of a, a, bit of a, a, bit of a job today. Um, our, half the house has lost power. So we've, had to, we've got extension cables running from this. Luckily, the studio didn't lose power. So we've got extension cables running to the router. Uh, we've got extension cable going to the, the freezer. And then we've had to empty our fridge in our main house and pop, put it in there. And tomorrow's Christmas Eve and we're having a party on Christmas Day and I've still got to make all the, the savoury food. Um, so it's a little bit stressful. Nothing, a little bit, a little bit stress at Christmas. It wouldn't be the same without it. Luckily it's just a big party we're having, we're not doing a full dinner. It's an evening Christmas do. Okay, wow, look at that. 
Right, so what we want to do is we've got, we have got that petal there and I think there is space for it. So I'm just going to bring them around and there we go. Now this was the one that was a little bit soft but if we're lucky it will flop into position. There we go. Nice. Okay, so again, just make sure it's staying in position. Come on, find you up. That's it. Okay. I'm going to turn it around and try and just get that tape up to the top and then bring it back down again. There we go. And just going to add a little bit more on. This tape's actually got a bit of a sparkly edge on it, which I've just realised. Okay, the wire cutters. Okay, and then just. Right there, like so. Good. Right, so you can see there the flower there. It's definitely a big flower. Um, so what I want to do now is just, I want to just make it slightly more cupped. So if you just get the tweezers, there. I'm just going to bend those wires just a little bit. There'll be enough movement just to manipulate them. Yeah, you can see I'm definitely able to bend those wires. So look. Oh yeah, that looks better. Yep. There we go. Oh, good, good, good. Nice. Okay, and then all I want to do now is just give it a little bit of a a shimmer in the middle, so I'm just going to grab the dusts. Uh, let's just see, I think I've used up all my brushes. Uh, oh no, 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 where's my one? Yeah, so we just want to get a little bit of a, a gold centre. No, I don't use that brush. Okay, and I'm just going to just paint a little bit of gold just on the points. It might have been easier to do this before we put it on together. So we don't want the whole thing to be gold, just little flashes of gold. That'll be nice. Okay, just work your way around. Yep, that looks good. Just keep spinning it around. There we go. Yeah. That looks good. It's definitely gives it that wee bit more expensive feel. I don't know why, but this does because of the gold, obviously. Okay, and there's a few wee gaps. So the wee gaps, I'm just going to. Just give it a wee dot of gold, just to... I've actually got some straight lines there, which is unusual. Okay, there we are. Excellent, good. Okay, so uh, I think what I'll do, I'll just have a quick tidy up, uh, and uh, when we come back, it's just a case of adding the two flowers, so this one and this one, and then we should be done. Okay, so here we are, the finishing touches. Um, so, uh, just recapping, so a Royal Ice of Tears down, um, that was easy peasy. There's a, a little lesson in uh, lesson one, a uh, link in the notes on how to stack uh, cakes like this. Um, and um, 
Yeah, so we've got the ribbon on the board, so it's a black ribbon that I've just stuck on there, which is nice, nice, and just just sets the cake off of the black uh, around there. Now, always is a, a display cake, so it's not a real cake. So if it's a real cake, you need to put a big straw in the cake or a posy pick that's going to fit over the sides of this. You shouldn't be sticking this straight in the cake because of all the, the wires. Okay. Also for competition pieces, you've got to put the posy picks or straws in as well. Best stick to posy picks, actually. Okay. So, um, so once that's there, just if this is firmed up uh, and nice and hard, it should be. Uh, we should be able to just simply just slot this into your posy pick. There we go. It looks nice. And obviously, this, try and decide where you want it. You might want it here, here, sort of thing, or you maybe want to put two or three on. Uh, we're just going to go for the one uh, for this cake. And then we have our little uh, flower medallion for the bottom. So I sprayed it with some water. And I'm just going to give it a little rub over the, the, the back to take some of that water off. And hopefully, this should just stick on. Fingers crossed. Okay, so we're going to go about here. Yep, onto there. Just giving it a good press down. So it's definitely stuck. It's nicely, it's firmed up nicely. And the other side was still soft. And there we go. And that's it all finished. There we go. So definitely one unusual cake for me, um, but it's been good fun making it. Really enjoyed it. Really different. So uh, thanks for watching. So just to give you some other ideas for this design, uh, there's loads and loads and loads. Uh, so the one I've already spoken about before, just before we finished the tutorial, uh, was actually making more flowers. So of course you can have more flowers, maybe another one here, uh, maybe a little one, a smaller one below it would look quite nice. Maybe doing this sort of idea is a little bit old fashioned, so maybe just one there and maybe a couple here would be nice. Um, to give it a little bit extra glam, you could use a gold leaf inside the centre, so put a bit of gold leaf on there would look really, really nice um, as well. And then just look at the cake on its, on its own, so you've got three different types of design here, we've got this top tier, this really unusual one, and then of course this lovely warm tone in the bottom. Now this top here, if you were just to do a three tier, the exact same as this, all painted in white, and just having this beautiful paintwork, yeah, paintwork cascading down and getting a little bit larger at the top, the bottom would look seriously lovely and just really, really contemporary looking with maybe a couple of flowers, just very, very clean and sharp looking, which would look really nice. Uh, and then, of course, we've got this sort of textured effect here on the middle one, which might not be to everyone's cup of tea. So, of course, rather than have the texture, why not just go for a smooth finish and then just go for the same paintwork but on a smooth box uh, would be quite nice. And then of course on, down the bottom here we've got this lovely terracotta colour. So of course we could go for, again, smooth finishes, but just going for the different shades of terracotta. So we've got the darker one, a medium shade, and then going for a much lighter shade terracotta uh, up top. Uh, and then maybe just uh, leaving this quite plain and carrying this design up. So we could do maybe like another stripe going across this way and then stripes down that way with a little bit of gold work on it as well. So, um, so just really open your mind up uh, and just have a little bit of fun. So I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hi, welcome back to all the pro members. Um, so, uh, so here we go, and another wedding cake to add to the, the selection we have on uh, our website. And this one's definitely a little bit different. Um, just going for the sort of more sort of uh, earthy tones. Um, it's not really an on-trend cake. It was just it was a cake that I designed purely from spending a lot of time online looking at interior design, and uh, that's where that picture comes with the the, the, the sort of uh, terracotta colours. And I just looked at all the different textures, the colours, and then created this cake. So it's a really good way to to. to you don't always have to be on trend. When I was looking to do the cake, I was wanting to, to be on trend, and the, the colour for 2019 is um, um, coral colours, um, but it just wasn't doing it for me at all. And when we had the cake shop uh, way back, and we used to design kits, it's exactly what I used to do. We used to go out and buy um, wedding magazines, uh, we'd buy interior design magazines, and just look to see what the trends were for the following year and come up with different different ideas. So that this is one of the colours for 2019, but not, not so much maybe for the, the wedding industry, but for interior design. But some things that does follow, uh, fall over onto um, cake design, so there's nothing wrong with it. And it's just a little bit different. And it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but of course it's so easy to change the colours. Um, so you could, you could go more ivories and, and the pinks, and maybe you could also change this to more coral colours, and it would look uh, fab in that style as well. 
Now, price-wise, this one, it's not going to be the cheapest cake, just purely down on to the, the size of it. So we've got um, three um, roughly 8-inch uh, cakes, um, so that's fine. Uh, and then we've got the two, um, the 5-inch, 6-inch cakes, two 6-inch, so I'm going to say two, three. Uh, And then we've got the top tier, which is uh, three 4-inch cakes, so 4, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15 uh, for that. Okay, that's fine. So I was going to say, about £58 for the cake, so I've added a wee bit extra on just for extra ingredients, so about £58 for the cake, um, and then we've got the ganache inside, it's quite a lot of ganache, um, so I'm going to say about £16 worth of ganache, um, and then the sugar paste, um, quite a lot of sugar paste so again I'm going to use, say about 20 it was almost pretty much, you know, so it's about 45 for the massa, and I used just over the, just under the half. So if we just say 20, if we say 22, just to cover our costs. Yep. And then we've got our cake drums and boards. Obviously, I've not used them here, but um, so we'll, we'll just put another 10 pounds for cake drum boards and ribbon. So it comes to 106 pounds. Uh, for the, the ingredients, obviously, if we're going for the normal um, uh, thing of a jiggy, um, that doesn't 106. Uh, so 200 and 318. 318. Um, so that's nowhere near the right price. Okay, so that that, that that's that, that's a good thing because that's that's just way 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 too cheap for this because of the size of the cake. Um, the skill it takes to get this nice sharp finish, uh, the paintwork, the big flower, it's got it's more a contemporary style cake, a bit unusual. Um, I, I would actually double the price. Uh, I was thinking around about the 600 mark for this cake. So um, so, so probably, um, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Cause it if, because it feels a bit more arty, arty farty, isn't it? Um, it just has a bit, a bit more. So probably, I mean, I wouldn't, I would definitely not have any less than four hundred. Um, but the, in my head, it was a, this would be a six. So if this was, if we had a cake shop, this would definitely be in the six hundred category. So you can see there, um, just pushing yourself outside and doing something a little bit more different uh, can just push the the price up quite a lot. So I would definitely aim this round about the. If we had the cake shop, this I'd be retailing this about six hundred and probably six. 625 or 6635, around about that sort of price. Definitely the 600 mark, just because it's a little bit different. And of course, it's a huge cake uh, and there's a lot of eating in it as well. So there we go. So I hope you've enjoyed watching it. This is actually our last tutorial of 2018. Um, and it's been a bit of a bit of a hard day today because the electricity has been cut off loads of times and it's been a bit, a, bit, a bit challenging, shall we say. So we're now going to have some steak pie and mashed potatoes and veg. So I uh, hope you have a nice, a nice day, whatever you're doing, and I shall speak to you again soon. Bye.